statement and give the floor to the representative of the Syrian Arab Republic. Shukran, Sida. Thank you, Madam President. Our delegation reiterates its strong rejection of the insistence of certain delegations to divert the deliberations of the Security Council uh, on the item entitled the situation in the Middle East to divert it from the primary purpose for which this item was established by forcibly introducing other topics from outside the mandate of that item such as the internal situation in Syria, Egypt, Lebanon or other countries. The objective clearly is to marginalize the Israeli occupation of Arab territories and demote it from the priorities of the United Nations agenda and to kill the terms of preference and substance of the item entitled the situation in the Middle East which is primarily connected as you very well know to the putting an end to this Israeli occupation to the settlement of the Arab Israeli conflict according to the well-known peace terms of reference it was very strange, ladies and gentlemen, that the representative of the Secretary General in his briefing this morning overlooked the clear legal description adopted in the United Nations for the occupied Syrian Golan. In his briefing, he kept using the expression Golan instead of saying the occupied Syrian Golan, which is the accepted and adopted expression in the United Nations. Added to that was his failure to address the need to ending the Israeli occupation of the Golan according to the resolutions of the Security Council. He also failed to highlight the cooperation between Israel on one side and the armed terrorist groups active in the forced separation area in the Golan on the other side. Madam President, I will not respond to the arguments and claims of certain delegations against my country, Syria, in this agenda item because I do not want to contribute to those efforts that only serve the continued Israeli occupation and the policies of those who protect that occupation. You should know, however, that we have so much to say to refute and dissect those claims submitted by delegations of those same states that support and shelter and arm those terrorists who spread destruction and extremism in Syria and who work very hard towards the failure of any peaceful solution under a Syrian leadership for this crisis. I name here especially the governments of Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Turkey, as well as certain well-known Western states, as affirmed recently by Zbigniew Brzezinski, the former National Security Advisor of the United States, and Roland Dumas, former Foreign Minister of France. Madam President, the Israeli occupation of the Arab territories and their consequences uh, on the peace and security of the area have reached a dangerous level in, uh, within the failure and in inability of the international community to compel Israel to end its occupation of Arab territories in accordance with relevant international resolutions and to put an end to Israel's gross violations of international conventions, primarily the Geneva Convention of 1949, and to and Israel's continued pursuit and unprecedented pursuit at the settlement activity and the expulsion of Arab, uh, the Arab population from their lands. It is very strange in this regard that certain countries who exhibit fake enthusiasm for the rights of peoples and the protection of the life of civilians and the, uh, the respect of in human rights lose that enthusiasm when dealing with Israeli violations and deprive the Palestinian people of their right to self-determination and to get rid of this racist Israeli occupation. Here we point to the dangers, dangers of the Israeli pursuit 
of what is called the Braver Law, which effectively seeks to confiscate 800,000 dunams of Arab territories, of Arab lands in the Negev, and the destruction of 36 Arab villages and the displacement of 45,000 Palestinian residents from their homes in order to build Israeli settlements instead in pursuit of the plan of ethical Cleanse, uh, of ethnic cleansing and Judaization practiced by Israel in full view of the merchants of crisis throughout the world. Madam President, in the occupied Syrian Golan, the suffering of Syrian citizens under Israeli occupation continues with the at the absence of the international will necessary to end this occupation according to relevant United Nations resolution especially Security Council Resolution 497 of 1981 and within the impotence of international human rights mechanism and failure to take firm steps to end the, method the methodical and gross Israeli violations of human rights and international humanitarian laws in the Golan. There was unfortunately no serious international movement to end these violations and to end the campaigns of settlement, uh, oppression, racial discrimination and the kidnapping of Syrian citizens from the separation area as well as Israel's building of a separation wall in the occupied Golan. Nearly 46 years have passed since Israel occupied the Golan and started its barbaric practices there. However, unfortunately, throughout the, that period, we have not heard anybody call for meetings to defend and protect the population of the Golan suffering under the occupation and those who were displaced by Israel from their territories. We haven't heard anybody calling for the holding of conferences to collect humanitarian assistance for these uh, individuals, in addition that the, to the fact that the enthusiasm of certain parties to sending commissions of inquiries suddenly disappeared when it had to do with the occupied Syrian Golan. In light of this international silence vis-à-vis -vis these Israeli practices, Israel went so far as to commit an aggression against, Israeli, uh, against Syrian territories on May 5, 2013 and continued issuing threats of further aggressions. We would like to reaffirm here that this continued commission by Israel of such aggressive acts has increased tension in the area to unprecedented levels which threaten the outbreak of a widespread regional war that would in threaten international peace and security. Also, the uh, continued practice of certain permanent members of the Security Council to provide cover for Israeli aggressive acts and Israeli occupation of Arab territories makes those states partners in those acts and renders them completely responsible for the consequences. Madam President, Israeli occupation forces provide, are providing assistance to terrorist groups in the separation area in Golan. They do that by transporting injured terrorists across the separation line to Israeli hospitals where they are treated and then returned to inside Syrian territories across the separation line where they would continue their act terrorist activities in that very sensitive area. We must pay close attention here to the fact that this Israeli assistance to terrorists is not merely a blatant violation of the separation of forces uh, agreement and the UNDOF mandate and international law. It also exposes to risk the lives of United Nations forces there and undermines their work. This is exactly what happened when those terrorist groups on several occasions kidnapped members of the peacekeeping staff, uh, of UNDOF staff with direct incitement from Qatari intelligence. This is a very grave and serious matter and we are still awaiting the results of the Secretariat investigation in this matter. In conclusion, Madam President, uh, it behooves some not to continue deceiving themselves and the entire world and not to continue providing justifications and excuses for Israel. Everybody knows fully and clearly that Israel is a settlement entity that was built on ethnic cleansing and therefore has never been concerned with peace. It has responded to all peace initiatives with postponement, diversions, and justifications with what they falsely call security concerns at the expense of the rights of pa the Arab population living under Israeli occupation for decades now. Thank you, Madam President. I give